Alright guys, today I'm in Junction City, Kansas on Milford Lake. I'm with Ryan Nagy, a guide. Uh, he's been guiding down here, I know, over a decade, haven't you? Yeah, pretty close. We're uh, we're gonna come out here and try to catch some stripers, you say? Crop. Wipers? Crappie. Crappie, yeah. Crappie, okay. Something new for me. So we on our first spot. We're getting pretty close. We'll see if there's some crappie in here. What, what, how, how, how are you approaching this? What's, what are we pulling up here to? This is just a man-made brush pile. It's a bunch of, you know, it looks like, I think it's old plastic casings in, oh. a, in a pot of concrete. And it's yeah. just dropped down here, but there's several of them. It looks kind of like a Christmas tree. I got uh, you. Or upside down a palm tree or something like that. So, but I know it's here. I got it marked. I found it with side scanning shoreline just one day looking for stuff i seen it right it's nice because you don't really get snagged up in it but it's it's yeah. on some really good crappie but i gotta get set up, set up on here else the wind's gonna all right a little bit. all right guys ryan is going to show us the live scope the garmin live scope and see what it's about i've been interested in this myself i have one but i haven't had a chance to play with it you should have had it turned on and had it ready for you <laughs> get this thing fired up we'll find our pile on and this wind is just normal up here, huh? Yeah. I mean, with it, in the spring it really blows, but this is not normal out of the north unless we're in the in the winter. Fall. Right. But, the brush pile is right over here. I got you. So I got this thing set up to where we're just going to be just above the bottom just a little bit. Right here's our bottom line. And I'm going to run this out to about 45 foot and we'll start looking for it real quick. So you're looking out 40 foot or I 50 am. a little or something yep. like that. With this, yep. So it should be coming up ahead of us. So we're, we moved our, I'll move this onto this. But we moved on, you, got, you can see I got a, waypoint dropped right here so uh -huh. we're right here we're creeping up on it so okay we did nine foot of water yep not a very deep spot and so the crop we've done spawned in here this year yes definitely does it tell you how much power you have and everything yeah that trolling motor that, that's, that's how much i'm running right now transferred over to them lithiums yet yep have you yep I'm running amped out door lithiums and they seem to be pretty good. I'm running the smallest ones they got, which are only 60 amp hour. I got 312 to make a 36 volt system. But with these brushless trolling motors, man, they just, they last. Oh, I mean, really? Oh yeah, I go all day long and never have any issues. I think we'll start seeing our piles in here somewhere. I gotta get this down a little bit deeper. There we go. There I passed it up. Just you can see them crappie in that pile right there. Yeah. It's all. I'm gonna pull that back ahead of us. And now you can see. Yeah. You can see the structure that's in there. And since we're close enough, we'll shrink that down just a little bit. And we'll need to back up just a little bit. Oh, that's quiet. That trolling motor? Yeah. Yeah, it's real. I mean, you can't hear it run either, like when it's running. I'm gonna change colors because the green's looking a little fuzzy today, so let's go back here. That menu. So in our setup, appearance, color scheme, go back to amber. That's gonna look better. Oh yeah. So you can see that's the that's the, the, the big pot that all this is sitting on. You can see the umbrellas coming up. You can see all these hot spots. Right. And that's where this this is a like a PVC type deal. See one coming up swimming around but yeah it's a pvc type deal um and it, so it's, this one actually reflects pretty hard but there's three of them sitting right in here i got just you. to the left of us i'm gonna back up just a little bit more and then i want to get this thing just right off to the side of us or right in front of us just a little uh -huh. bit now the transducer you're working with is this one this one right okay here. and so wherever this is pointing is where th is where this is at so i lost should be ahead of us just a little bit. I'll there. keep turning this. Did you see them coming in? They're coming into that. Oh pile. yeah, there's all they move in and out of that. Okay, so it's gonna creep back up. So you can see there's quite a bit, quite a big pile of whatever in there. Right. 
and right now I've got this there's a pile from four foot zero is this transducer right so from about four foot to 26 foot we got stuff in front of us that way yeah yep, straight ahead of the boat actually it's off on your side just a little bit so so when we start casting we're gonna cast that way yeah and I'm gonna actually bump forward one more bump get me just a little closer look at them fish swimming in the top of that pile yeah oh this is awesome We'll get to where we can put the baits right here. These crappie, I and mean, we were only 11 foot, these crappie are not bashful about me sitting right on top of them. Really? Nope, not at all. As a matter of fact, I can take, this is this 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 is easy. I know that there's crappie right in here. So 10 foot, take a 10 foot rod. I'm gonna put this right in front of here. I wanna watch my bait go right down to them and I'm gonna stop that bait right on top of them. All right. So I just tossed it in, there goes I see my bait. It. Yeah, I see it. There's one there's right there fish. on it. Yeah. That was quick. Dead stick it. Yeah, they find it real quick. And then probably a bunch of little ones right there on top. Your bigger ones are usually down in there a little bit deeper. Uh -huh. But I'm gonna do it again. Just, I'll drop it down a little farther. See my bait oh, go down. Look, See that little one's chasing. Oh yeah, they do. I get down in there. I'm gonna dead stick it right in the middle. And give it 10, 15 seconds and wait and see what happens. Uh-huh. And I'm gonna slowly, just as slow as I can turn the reel, reel it straight up. And usually you'll get a big thump on the way up. You ever tip it with a minnow or anything? I never use minnows. Really? I don't feel like you need to anymore. Most of the time, I mean, in tough situations probably, but normally, uh, these fish in this lake will eat any type of little just two inch anything. I mean, curly tail grubs when they're on the banks or if they're not on the banks, anything with a straight tail or something that just wiggles. And I, from what I, I, I used to think, everybody used to have to put it down there and they'd jig it uh -huh. and they'd jig it and they'd jig it. And after watching that on this live scope, when you jig it, most of the time they turn and go the other direction. Oh, really? They, they like a very still presentation. Mm -hmm. um, you put it down there and you just dead stick it, hold it dead still and what sits there, they'll look, they'll, they'll swim right up to it, look at it, and then make up their mind. Uh -huh. and they'll either leave or they'll eat it. Right. Um, but as soon as you start twitching it and jigging it real hard, man, they, they just dig. That's they not even natural, out. is no, it? No, they okay. dig out quick. So they'll hit it on the drop real fast if they want to right off the bat, or sometimes the slower you can lift that thing, just reel it up, I mean, super, super slow, and they'll follow that bait out of 25 foot of water, almost to the surface of the water. Really? and they're interested in that and they'll hit it on the way up if they're going to eat it but if they come up and you stop like if they're following it and you stop that bait they'll turn and swim right back to the bottom they want a very natural slow presentation they are not an aggressive i want to chase something fish right unless they're on the bank spawning so that that live scope is taught yeah I taught a lot of stuff yeah you get to see firsthand what how they now that looks to. like a big nice fish yeah that's a better fish right there that's not a crappie that's not a crappie no that's something else swimming through there it could be a blue look how he's real this oh, real yeah. slow tail two of them coming through there yeah it could be a blue could be a buffalo could be a carp it's hard it, to tell uh -huh. really what it is but you know that I ain't no crappie swimming through there are crappie are going to be these smaller dots swimming around up in here right okay so, yeah that's try this again 12 foot that's a little fun. watch my bait drop right there mm -hmm. put it right in front of that guy they drop down and look at it. Yep, they're looking, they just ain't. We got a north front that came in. We had a big storm to blow through yesterday. We didn't get the storm here, but it came right north of the lake. And we had 60 mile an hour winds, did some damage here in Kansas. And this morning we wake up to a nice north northeast wind, so. And we don't normally get northeast winds here in the, in the summertime. Oh yeah. Shame. Oh, that one there went crazy, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, chasing something. I don't know what he's chasing. It's interesting to watch. It's fascinating to see how much movement there is down right. there. Right. Because you used to look at a normal sonar, and on that normal sonar, nothing's moving. It's just printed across your screen, and it's sitting there. But right. With this, you, I mean, there's movement all of, of all kinds in there. Oh yeah. Just came over. His, look at all that stuff swimming around the top. Some of it's pretty big, I say. Yeah. It's probably buffalo or something. Oh yeah, or maybe white bass or something uh -huh. swimming through there. 
There's a bunch of them coming in. Yeah. Feeding on the little crappie, maybe. <laughs> Oh, guy. Hey. Yeah, a little guy. Well, you got to be nine inches around here. We don't have a length limit on this lake. Oh, really? Most of the lakes in Kansas have a ten inch. That one's probably about eight. So, oh, okay. Fat little guy, but. And that's what I, I I'm seeing a lot of little smaller fish. I, I bet that's what this one's full of. We may have to go find something different too. I got you. See my crappie piles. That's what we were fishing. But we right. got a lot of other stuff. So we was, we noticed the, on that video there was stuff swimming at, in and out of here, but. This is all probably white bass and small wipers. Uh-huh. All this small stuff that was coming in and out of here. You can see some back in this oh, area. Yeah. So, but that was the that was what the structure we were fishing. And this is other stuff that's just in the area on the and this is just a mud flat out here. Snagged up on that one. Oh. Do this trick. Not deep enough. Not deep. Oh, you got it. Yeah. You ever seen anybody do that? No, I ain't seen nobody do that. Basically, you just use the tip of your rod, run it down to there, knock, knock it, it off the branch. But yeah, I've never seen anybody do that before. You don't think it messed them fish up? No, probably. They just don't spook from stuff like that. No, I mean, they weren't feeding all that crap right. to begin with. But... The well, they're still in the power. It looked like yeah. to me they'd have run them out of the power, but sure didn't. I thought I found a big wad of shad one time. I threw my cast net on it. There's one little stick sticking up. I had a bunch of nice crappie about that big, and I had about a dozen crappie in my net. Oh. And I dropped. Oh, where's that's a good one? I dropped that all them crappie back out of the net, and I watched them on live scope go right back to that tree. I thought, huh? Well, I'll be dang. They're yeah. all crappie there. So I took my pole and cast it out there and caught me four or five of them. Really? Yeah, they just, they're just a weird fish. Stuff like this doesn't bother them. Nice crappie. Oh, yeah. What's up? Build the pull up on that. That branch. Uh oh. <laughs> well, they're starting to become a little more active, though. Yeah, you'll probably have to catch 20 of them small ones to get one. He went right back to them. See Look, him? right there. Yep. Yeah, he went right back down. Like I said, I don't know if that little front did something to him, so I didn't get out there quite far enough. I'm gonna reset that. Drop it right in on these fish right here. Mm -hmm. Boom. Right here. Stop it right there at his level and let him make up his mind. See that bait swam back on the... Yeah. It swung back. We'll do it again. You're going way out this yeah, way. Yeah, a little right? farther. Let that drift oh, right across the top yeah. of that. See if I can tune that in. Right yeah, there you go. Oh, something come out of that pile. Yeah. Something big. Probably a bass. Have you dialed this in on any catfish yet? Yeah, a few. Um, I really, really, really like using the, the perspective mode which turns the transducer into what basically is a forward looking side scan. Yeah. And uh, in shallow water, it's, it's really effective. Um, you can look around, find them, and then e either anchor, spot lock, or whatever, uh -huh. and, and then cast in those directions and, and use them. I have not been able to really use it too effectively in um, just open water, chasing something down and, right. and, and catching something that way, but definitely can use it uh, uh, Kevin Parks and I used it at the Catmasters tournament down at Possum Kingdom and took second in it and, and live scope come into a big play in that. Really? Right. And uh, that stand in timber? It, it, that's all that lake is, is timber. Yeah. So yeah, we used so it. So you come timber. out of that shallow water and went to that stand in timber yeah. and did good? Yeah. We got nothing big in this one. Let's go find another one. All right. But yeah, it, uh, it, uh, it's effective. I mean. All right, guys. We, uh, we have finished up with the crappie. The crappie weren't cooperating as much as we'd like today so uh, we are going to try to drag for some catfish and give her a shot we're gonna give her a shot it's a, in, in the middle of the spawn so yeah probably gonna be tough on that but we, we'll catch a few you're gonna run some planer boards on them, yeah huh? i'm gonna get out some planer <clears throat> boards and uh, spread them out a little bit because we're we're pretty shallow we're only in nine foot right now and we're gonna drop off a little bit deeper but those fish don't like being under this boat so they'll pull off the side we'll, 
cover a bigger area. Let's see what we can get comfortable. All right. Okay, guys, we fixed the pull of drift. Now, like I say, I am on the boat with Ryan Nagy. He is on Milford Lake. And what's the name of your guide service? It's Primetime Catfishing. It's three words. Primetime Prime Time Catfishing. Fishing. Yeah. All right, you've been doing this for over a decade that I know of. Yeah, I started, I've been doing it full time for 11 years and I've been, um, I did it part time for a while before right. that, probably three or four years before that. Before I decided to make the jump, yeah, scary jump. Yeah, it's been a good time. Loading the planer boards yep. up. Yep, I like to lock them down so they don't pop loose. Yep. Now we are motivating right now. Yes, Greg, we we're are going. going forward. We're running. I got it at a half mile an hour. Once I get them spread out, I'll speed it up just to get the boards out a little bit farther and faster, and then, and then I'll probably drop her back down. Just pull a slow drift. Point four, point five. I'll slower. probably go. Yeah, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, somewhere yeah. in there. They're, our water's warm, so no, it's 80. And we got some 50 pounders in this lake? Yeah, yeah, there should be some bigger than that. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, I seen something that, that I don't do that you just did. What's that? You double wrapped that clip. I do not like it to so pop loose at all. Okay. Nope. I've never, even guiding in with people that don't know how to fight a fish, I've right. never lost a fish due to having to take that planter board off. Right. So I lock them down. So you get those little ones that wrap on it, bang on it pretty hard and don't uh -huh. hook up. There's no sense in having to pull it back pull. in and reset it. Um, right. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah. It, speed, speed game sometimes, you know, you gotta, yeah time if you only got five hours to go out and fish and catch as many fish as you can and, right and, it, and you have to pull a super super slow drift there's no sense of doing it super slow right um, maximize your time you're out there now your one board's way out there already yeah. is, is there a have you got a pattern that, that you stagger them how, no, how you... i'm just gonna drop the drop the first two that i set on there at the same distance and then once I get out there, I don't know. I'll go a little bit farther and I'll lock it down and let it pull out to the side and I'll do the same thing with these. Okay. These boards. Yeah, I've got that one locked down so it's starting to pull out. Yeah. So this is just a random flat. There's really nothing here that you're fishing not, not other than much. it being a flat. Not much other than the, you know, right now you got the river that comes in and it kind of dumps into this is the first area of the lake, but there ain't no, there ain't nothing, nothing, just mud. Just mud. Yep. And that's all this lake is, is mud. That's why I said it was a troller's drifter's dream. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, Back in the day, we used to drift coagulated blood. Um, oh, I remember that. And it was, it would, you had to use a soft rod and light line, you know, stretched a lot because this stuff would, would uh, come off the hook pretty easy. And if you had a rough bottom at all, then that stuff would just get snaggy and it popped like that and just pull off the hook. But this thing is just mud bottom, man. That's all right. it just smooth. I remember old John Jameson back in the day, he, he come out with that blood. That's what he used to come. He'd come to Kentucky at uh, the Henderson, yep. the Bellas, and he'd have that coagulated blood. Yep. Uh oh, there you go. Well, I don't know if he's still there or not. Yeah, yeah he's there. Did <laughs> he pop off? No, I think he's there. I think he's just there. Yeah, he's there. That's him back there.
you're catching any black and white tide bolts. I've caught one in the uh, Ohio River close to Mississippi. This lake is full. Oh, really? We catch on a normal year 20, 25, 30 of them. So I caught up to, to 33 pounds. There we go. Little one start today. Yeah. There we go. We got a bunch of them tagged in here too. This oh, will, do you? Yeah, there'll be a tag, a good tag right there. There we go. Turn them loose. Yeah. And it's a spillway, uh -huh. and then the rest were scattered around the lake. So they wanted to see what the movement was over a two-year period, and it's it's. Hit, you know, right. with the device in them, and then they had now for the first summer, and then after that, they had enough much more that they got loaded up. So right, about 100, 150 total, and I caught one of those 150 out of all of them in this lake. Oh, really? Yeah. And then Brian Pinnock is another guide on the lake here. He uh, he's caught one also, but. I've still never seen one since. Is he feeling bigger? No. A little twerp. Well, I figure that's all we're going to get anyway today because Might of the be. spawn. Occasionally we do catch some bigger ones, you know. Yeah. 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 Back in the game. Back in the game. Now both of those hit like the farthest one out, didn't they? Pretty typical. The you, outside board seemed that like you wanna, that one's gonna be an outsider for sure. The outside board seems to always pick up more fish. Yeah. He's about the same size. About the same size. That's why. Keep talking to people about you know it's better to if you're gonna take any home and eat that fish is only three or four years old that's an easy fish to replace in the waterway but oh yeah 12 to 15 in this lake is 10. oh 10 years old really so it takes 10 years before you get any good out of a fish in the lake so that's why it's important to turn those loose yes sir you got a lot of bite marks on this yeah he's had uh I mean, something himself. bigger yep well he can go get bigger <laughs> Well, that's two and just like a little, a little pass. Yeah. Well, I know the easier them size fish have been people have been catching those, but Have it. Anything of any size. But there has been some good ones caught. So for us, it seems like. Oh, hey, oh that's green rod holder. Oh, that's a good one. Up, I don't think. Yep, he did. He did. He's on there. Well, they're all over it. Though, don't they? Yep. Good stuff. I think he's a little bit bigger than the rest of what we caught though, ain't he? Not much. Give him an extra pound. Yeah. Pretty fast action so far. Yeah, I mean I don't know why any little kids wouldn't have a ball doing this. Right. Or even there's a lot of adults that have a ball doing this. Oh yeah. I think a lot of people get hung up on everything's gotta be giant all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm tired of giant myself, to be honest with you. That's why I had so much fun yesterday in that little mud duck boat yeah. going up the Kansas River. Fishing with worms and stuff. Is that back old school stuff? Yeah, yeah. They're a lot of fat, healthy little fish. They are. They sure are. They're pretty. I love all their colors they got inside of them. All that iridescent purple and Purple, and blues yeah. And golds and they're pretty. They lose that once they get so big though. Yeah. I mean they still got it to an extent, but they do. That they got that pearl look when they're really young. Pretty. Yeah. Those 
those are the high bulbs that we catch. But man, they got some coppers and golds in them and oranges and pinks and they got some real fancy colors in them. So you got, there, there's a bunch of them that must be the genetics are up in here yeah. then. Yeah, it's a genetic. Yeah, we got a lot of them. What's Carbon the biggest one you found, caught? Biggest one, I caught a 33. Um, that was a black and white 33. And I actually caught it two weeks in a row. Oh, because really? Because it had the, the black and white coloration. Uh -huh. and it was real easy to identify it in pictures. Oh, yeah. What's weird is both of them, they're about 700 yards apart from where I caught it. Uh, both of them caught by 13 year olds. Really? Yes. One was a 13 year old boy, the other was a 13 year old girl. <laughs> and I thought that was so cool. Yeah. But I think there's one of them, I've, one of them I've caught three times. Um, it wasn't very big, it's just a little one, but right. uh, I know by its, uh, the way the patterns were on it, that you can hold those pictures up side by side and they're caught, uh, yeah. yeah, easily identifiable. Big one, but it's another fish. Yeah, he is. Well, he was whatever whatever that snag was we hung up on, he was right there with it. Yeah, that's the size you want to eat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Actually, Look, I like his black fins. Mm -hmm. So on a rule of thumb, you're in what kind of water here? Uh, 13. 13 so what do you got about 25 30 foot of yeah, line out I before you like to, if i can usually about double or triple the length before i put my board on okay and that way i get a good angle some people you know get them too far this way and then when the fish pulls on it they're pulling down and you got to do a lot of reeling before you ever get any tension put on gotcha. it if i can keep the, the angle of this line out to my board and then not change that angle too much to to the hook yeah they'll hook themselves so Kansas guys, y'all got a pretty good force of catfish anglers in your state. Oh my lord! Well, what, it's like every year it's blowing up. So what's what's the main bodies of water that that you Kansas guys fish? I know Milford's always on Milford's the map. Been on the yeah, it's the, like the premier one to go to. But man, we got a lot of good lakes. Tuttle Creek's good. Perry's good. Clinton's getting good. John Redmond's a great catfish. John Redmond's got awesome channel cats in it and some blues. Uh huh. We got Wolf Creek that's got blues in it. Wilson's got blues in it. I mean, the state stocked a lot of blues over the last ten years. Oh okay. And uh, so we got. And of course, of fish. the rivers itself. We got, yeah, we got, uh, well, the only navigable body of water, we only have three rivers you can actually put a boat on and travel up and down in Kansas. Oh, okay. So Kansas River is the main one. Mm -hmm. uh, but then we have the, the, the rivers that run into these reservoirs. You can go up those rivers up until the end of the wildlife area. Right. Um, so there's a lot of rivers you can still fish, especially when you get water running in, those fish come out of these reservoirs and go up those rivers and they can get really good. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So, and then of course the Missouri River is, is a pretty one for you oh, guys. Oh yeah, but... that's close. That's just, you know, the east side of our state is the Missouri River up by right. Kansas City. Uh, at St. Joe, Missouri, and, uh, and all of central Missouri, is a lot of catfish running in there too. Right. Um, they got that river, and that river's got some giants in it. Some big giants. Right. Well, y'all got some pretty country up here. I'm having fun learning some new water. Yep. Well, I do like the dragging aspect of this, as far as no hang-ups. Yeah, we don't have to worry about no trees. Yeah, no trees. No, it's a dragger's lake, so people ask about tournaments. Well, how do you pinpoint what you're going to do? Well, you just got to spend some time on it and look around. Right. A lot of, spend a lot of time on these sonars. Find what you need, what you are comfortable doing. and. That's the other thing, people. Well, do we need to drag it? Do we need to anchor fish it? Whatever is your comfort zone. Yeah. Stick to your comfort zone. Don't try to change up just because somebody else says that you got to catch them suspended, or, or you got to catch them dragging, or you got to catch them anchored, or you got to catch them on a ledge, or you got to catch them on a flat. You know, what is your specialty and stick to that? You know, right. Maybe there's times to go outside the box, but if you're comfortable doing one thing and you can produce fish doing it that way then do it absolutely well i think a lot of guys especially with these tournaments they get psyched out from listening to other guys oh, they got a game plan they've been up there and caught a few fish but then they get back to the captain's meeting 
and then they start hearing this other stuff. I got an 80, I got a 90, I got yeah. this. And then they're like, well, we got to change things up. And then the day of the tournament, they're all screwed up. Yep. Yeah. Use your gut, your gut feeling, and that's generally your best one. Absolutely. Yep. If you got a solid game plan going into a tournament, you know, and, and you're comfortable with it, I'd stick to it. Yeah. That's usually what's going to do do you the best. Yeah, don't, don't get sidetracked. Or psyched out. Right. <laughs> that's more like it, though. But panic. You know, People panic. You yeah. Know, about noontime, they ain't caught much, and they panic, and you see them start running all over the lake, and you're like, huh, huh, that guy, he's struggling today. Yeah. But you can definitely tell when they're struggling. Yep. That's what I like about it when you got a couple good ones in the boat, and uh, you start everybody's sinking. starting to struggle. You're like, I'm just gonna grind her out. Yeah. <laughs> Makes it feel a little better. Oh, yeah. Grind it out. Well, they're dark at least. Uh -oh. He's got a lot to say. Yeah. He's mad. I got hook in it. had my hook in the thing and then I'll try to put it. Another nice one. He'll grow up. Right there's why I like braid though. I mean, they hook themselves. Yeah. Okay guys, we're gonna wrap it up. We have uh, come out here today and we've got a good education on some Garmin uh, electronics yep trolling motors that live scope mm -hmm. and how to use them so it's very interesting on my end uh, and you got to come out here and catch some catfish as well so appreciate you uh, coming out with me anytime I've said for years come on if you're ever out here come out yep. see me so. well this won't be the last time I come to Good. Kansas I've uh, really enjoyed my stay so Good. it's a nice place all right guys that is the end of our day appreciate you watching and we'll see you in the next one